So we know that there is this growing uh, body of evidence uh, and, and really rigorous research that is showing that uh, psychedelic assisted therapies show a big promise in, uh, in the area of huge unmet needs, uh, specifically in the area of uh, brain disorders. So I'm speaking here about mental, neurological and substance use disorders. Although the kind of the first line of this research, which by the way, started already uh, last century um, and then was halted due to a uh, war on drugs, um, have been addressing uh, in the first line mental health, but we also see that um, there is a lot of potential for addictions and there are also some um, neurological diseases that are now um, more and more uh, looked at and, and I'm happy to speak about this uh, in, in more detail. Um, but yes, I would say that uh, we really see that these therapies are coming because uh, the science is telling us that uh, they do work. Um, and this is why we are setting up this European collaboration um, now, which is called PAREA. PAREA stands for the Psychedelic Access and Research European Alliance to really come together in, uh, in Europe. Uh, and start engaging with the uh, European institutions and policy market ma makers to discuss how uh, we can prepare for the rollout of these uh, treatments. And I also want to add that um, I um, intentionally call them um, psychedelic assisted therapies because we know that this time it's no longer just a, a molecule alone at work. We are talking here about uh, a, a very interesting combination, which is a combination of, uh, of a drug and a therapy. So what's critical really uh, in this field is that um, you don't just get, uh, uh, you're not just administered uh, the, say, the psychedelic substance, but you have a really very strong therapeutic kind of envelope preparation. You have therapies during um, the, the, the session and then you have a follow-up kind of after care, care provisions uh, so that people can better uh, integrate their experiences. So yes, I, I like uh, you mentioning the main, main, mainstream mental health services because we really want these treatments to become um, part of the mainstream, of course, evidence-based uh, effective interventions, just like any other intervention in the area of brain health. For this to happen, of course, we still need more research to really show that uh, these uh, therapies are safe and effective. Um, so I would say the first objective of this collaboration in Europe is to encourage uh, EU policymakers to allocate more funding from um, programs like Horizon Europe to further study um, these substances so that then they can be approved by regulators. And we um, see already that um, quite advanced trials have been uh, uh, are happening, for instance, in, in the US where um, there are third stage clinical trials for MDMA-assisted therapy for PTSD. And it's not unlikely that FDA will approve this therapy sometime towards the end of, of the next year. And so this is something um, you know, we need to keep in Europe because this will, also, this will also come. But we need still more research, as I said. Um, secondly, we need to already start thinking about the uh, um, accessibility of these treatments because this is not... Um, uh, a treatment like, say, a uh, standard SSRI, um, they need a proper infrastructure, they need trained therapies. What's really important also is that um, we look at, at safety um, because therapies will be working with patients um, with altered states of consciousness. So how really we chart these new uh, territories, how we make sure that there are guidelines, there is, you know, um, really a, a, uh, emphasis on on, uh, on uh, safe uh, safe administration and safe kind of uh, circumstances for this. Also, things like how we navigate uh, touch. You know, is it okay to touch the hand? We know already um, that you know there there is a potential for abuse because we are all humans and there are different therapies. So it will be very important to um, make sure that there are rigorous standards and, and kind of training guidelines uh, here. Um, then, you know, it's also part of a, of a larger discussion um, of how underfunded, um, for instance, mental health services are. We know from uh, WHO um, a study from last year that uh, uh, funding for mental health is only 2% of a total uh, funding uh, in the area of uh, mental health and majority of these 2% will still go to institutional mental health. So I think one of the uh, objectives of PAREA is also to support this wider area of, uh, of, of mental health and, and improving um, um, the investment and prioritization. 
um, from other uh, areas that we will look at is also um, a need to reassess the current classification of those disorders. At the moment, they are put in the more, most restrictive um, category in the UN Convention from 1971, which says that they have no medical uh, application and high potential for abuse. Of course, we do not want them to be rescheduled at the level where um, it's, they are accessible to the general public, but we want them to be rescheduled the level that will stop hampering uh, research because now it's very difficult to conduct research and also many investors are still not uh, um, ready to invest because you know investing in substance uh, substances that are um, scheduled in this way might not seem like a good investment for them so for a number of reasons um, for us it will be important to really start a evidence-based discussion on you know in which uh, category they should be sitting.